Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we will continue our game engine series and today we will learn how to create a window in Linux. So right now I'm using X11, maybe in future I'll use Wayland but I'm not so sure about it because that will make this series even more longer without having some result. We just need to see some games, some pixels, so let's just stick to X11 for now. What I'll do is firstly clone my repository in our projects folder that I have in my Linux. This is KDE Neon, by the way, and it has both Wayland and X11. Let's clone our mini engine. And now that's done, let's go to our mini engine. And open that in Visual Studio Code. Well, here, this is our game engine. And we have some files to change because... This game.h just wants our Windows window, which will have issues here because Windows window should only be on the Windows. So, first of all, we need to change some things here. These are all the changes. And also, we're going to introduce an on window event. I'll explain to you later why I did this. And here we subscribe to our window event, which is the on close event. The cleanup just now calls the onclose event, which just sets the M running to false. I also did some changes to our mini logger. This is just because this compiler, GCC, has some troubles with that, and that code was like a little bit, it had some warnings, but we fixed them here. I'll just use std arg, and we're gonna use argument forwarding in a different way. I'll show you. So this is no longer a generic function because we need to forward these arguments. The reason I did that is because in this compiler, printf gives a warning whenever you're just doing one thing and you don't have this. Because this is a string, we just have to add this. Else it gives warning that is, I guess, for the improper usage. And here is the argument forwarding. We start this argument list, which is for this message. And then we just use vprintf and then we just forward our argument list and then we end this and then just print the new line and same we'll do with our file but with our file we'll use the vf printf all right this is for our logger now let's get to our linux windows and let's create our linux window in the platform folder we don't have any windows folder right now so let's create a new folder and call it linux here let's create two files, one will be linuxwindow.h, one will be linuxwindow.cpp. Here we include the xlib which is just to have a connection with our xwindow system and the unordered set which is just an hash set for maintaining the repeated keys so that we just don't like have the repeated keys as an action of on button release or on button down. I did that to avoid that. The other things are just some constructors, and we have this on update, on draw, on close, get width, get height in it. This is our pointer to the display connection. This is our screen. This is our root window. This is our current window, and this is the events. So let's get into our CPP file. All right, what happens first is this gets called, and it calls like the init function, which is here. So first we just try to establish a connection with our X display server and if we fail to do so then we just log an error and return from here. Then we get the default screen for that display connection and then we get the root window. Then we just create our window using this X create simple window function and if you want to know each and every parameter then we can go here which is a really nice documentation. So here you can see that it's the display, it's the parent window, it's the X and Y of the window, like where they will stay, like somewhere here, if you suppose. Then the width of the window, the height of the window, the border width. Then we have the border color and then we have the background color. So that's what I did. This is the display, this is the root window, X0, Y0. Then our window width, our window height, and then 15 as our border width. Then we have black pixel for our border and black pixel for our background. Then we say if the window is zero, that means we fail to create the window, then just return. Then we set the standard properties for the display, which is like the title, 
and uh, if you just google this you'll also be able to find this as well on the same manual so here you can see the display and what it does so it's just self-explanatory then we select what kind of events we want our window to handle for that we use mass and exposure mass is just for minimize maximize so an exposure event gets called right now structure notify mass is when something changes with the structure that is resizing or something else then the pointer motion mask is you guessed it when the mouse moves the button press mask is when you press a mouse button or something and releases when you release this and then key is for your keys and when you release it and i did this to make sure that we don't have auto repeat for our window and then we just map this window to our display server and then we get to our on update here you see a weird thing called atom now there has been a lot of times in your program when you have to do string comparisons and atom is just that has some numerical value and which just assigns itself to a string so it points to a string it is like referring to a string but it's actually an integer and it can point to data structures and different values so it provides a really fast comparison as you can see i'm just comparing it right here what happens when we call this function is it returns the value if vm delete window is true or false all right and then we send that vm delete message atom to our window manager protocol and these parameters are just the display server connection then our window and then what are the messages that you want to send and the length of the messages so this is pretty standard and then we try to get our event for our display server so if it returns zero that means there is no event right now for this window then we just switch the event based on its type if it's a client message that is one we kind of sent here and we check if this data.l the zeroth member of this is equal to this atom that means a window close event has happened so the x client here can have a lot of values and you can check all of these things on the website that i showed you before the configure notify is just for the structure mass we only want to capture the resize event and this x configure event can happen due to various reasons so we just check if the width is different from our width or the height is different from our height then we just set our height and width to that values and then we just send the resize event the motion notify event is as simple as it gets just get the x motion which just returns your yep the mouse pointer values the new position of the mouse and then we have the x button which is just our button the mouse button that we press 0 1 3 for our middle left right mouse buttons and same here then we have our key press event and this function is used to convert our system key value into a character value so we can store that and here we say if repeat keys have already found this key code then don't send a key event because this event is already has happened so we don't want to repeat events so if it's zero if the count is zero if this key has not occurred before then we just send that event and then we insert the this key in our repeat keys for the key release it's the same thing we just check if this key has been pressed before and if it did then we just erase it from our repeat keys and send the key event so on close is pretty much self-explanatory we just unmap this window then we destroy this window and then we close the connection to our display server i have the cmake plugin installed in my visual studio code and if we try to build right now it should give errors because we did not edit our cmake cache file and you can see here that our platform windows is actually enabled we don't want this because we're not on windows anymore we just save this and then if we try to build it builds successfully and if you run you can see a black window here and here we go this is our linux window and every event is here and we don't get the key repeats nice that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed thank you so much for watching